Good evening and welcome to the evening service. We're so glad that you've joined with us online this evening and uh, trust that the service will be a help and a blessing to you tonight. It's been such a blessing over these last few Sundays to be able to join together in person for our morning services and, uh, and we're looking forward to soon being able to meet back together for our evening services as well. And we'll keep you up to date on that and we'll look forward to making some announcements about that uh, here very soon. But we're glad you've joined with us tonight. We're looking forward to singing together and hearing God's word preached. And I hope you'll join with us in song as we begin singing Standing on the Promises. And uh, you can't sing this song sitting down. So even from home, stand up where you're at if you would, and we'll sing together Standing on the Promises. Thank you, Pastor Brett. It's nice to be singing with you right now. We have Ari Holmes playing the piano for us, and I am looking forward to uh, leading singing with Ari playing. So make sure you sing your best uh, and, and sing out to the Lord. Let's sing together, Standing on the Promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior, standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing. My Savior standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God, standing. sing another song softly and tenderly Jesus is calling and uh, that'll be on the screen there for you softly and tenderly Jesus is calling softly and tenderly Jesus is calling calling for you and for me See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, O oh sinner, come home. Why should we carry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies? 
mercies for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home. Time is now fleeting, the moments are passing, Passing from you and from me. Shadows are gathering, deathbeds are coming, coming for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tender. Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home. On the last, oh, for the wonderful love he has promised, promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon, pardon for you. Tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home. Excellent. Thank you for singing with us. Thank you to Ari for playing the piano for us. That is awesome to have one of the teenagers doing that. One of the reasons that we have Ari doing that for us is because she has been helping around the church this week. We did get approved for Canada Summer Jobs, which we're very grateful for. That allows us to have some teenagers here working through the summer, and they're doing a lot of different things around the building, things that we probably wouldn't be able to get done this summer, except that we had them. But there are some other opportunities that come with having the teenagers around. We do have two teenagers who are working to help our seniors over the summer. They're, they do this uh, every year. and We've been grateful for Canada Summer Jobs making that happen. And so uh, if you are in our 50 plus group and you are in need of some teenagers to do something around your house or around your apartment or do something for you, please let us know. Now understand this, with COVID-19, things are a little different now. So we're going to send them in. They're going to be wearing a mask uh, just to, to help make sure that they uh, are, are, are being as safe as they possibly can be. They're washing their hands regularly. If there's something you don't want them to do, they're not going to do it. But if there's something that they can help you with, they want to do that and they'll uh, abide by social distancing guidelines and uh, we're glad for the opportunity to help that. You might have friends that you know that could use some help. Well, let us know that. Uh, these workers are community workers. They want to help and they want to use this opportunity to, to reach out into the community. And so call into the office, let us know, leave us a message if no one answers, and let us know that you're looking for some help if you're here within our Barry area or if you're one of our church families. We look forward to helping with you. We want to take some time to go to the Lord in prayer, and we're going to be in prayer for Donna Campbell. Donna Campbell. She hasn't been doing well this week, so be in prayer for Donna if you would. Also be in prayer for Jan Banting. Uh, Jan had emergency surgery this week, and uh, thankfully, from everything we know, she's come through well, but she's uh, still in hospital. She should be coming home uh, very soon, and maybe she's, she's in process of that already right now. So uh, be in prayer, if you would, for Donna, for Jan, and then also be in prayer for the summer workers, that the Lord would use them and uh, help them to get much accomplished uh, around the church and, and for the Lord uh, today, or, or this summer, excuse me. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll continue in our service. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, that we have to serve you. Lord, it can be easy for us to think that this is what we do, that this, is, uh, that this life is just what we're to live, we're just to go about our, uh, our existence living, accumulating, surviving, and even, Lord, those of us who would consider ourselves to be religious, Lord, sometimes we just 
live the life. Lord, help us not to just do things, but help us to be. Lord, help us to be with you. Help us to know you. Help us to walk with you. Lord, we thank you for the opportunities that you've given us to rely on you. And Lord, this COVID-19 is a time like that where people are relying on you, learning to rely on you again. Lord, help us to rely on you. Father, as we think of these who are struggling right now, we know that they need your strength. We pray for Donna. We pray for Jan. We ask for your help for them. And we pray that you would, uh, that you would use people from our church, people around them to encourage them. We pray that you'd be with the doctors. And Lord, we pray that you would give them strength both physically and emotionally and spiritually as they go through these trials. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to have Canada Summer Jobs workers. We pray for them. We ask that you would empower them and keep them safe and help them to be a blessing. Lord, we pray that this service, uh, just right now, Lord, that you would work in us and convict us from your word. Be with Pastor Brett as he preaches. And uh, Lord, help us, to, help us to see you in this. Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We now have a special music. It's a pre-recorded special, and it's from Stephanie Martin. time to laugh, a time to cry, a time for night and day, for work and play, a time to live, a time to die. So I will trust in God, the changeless one of eternity. The seasons change, the flowers wither, the years bring age, and memories fade. The only solid place to place your faith is in the one who orders time. So I will trust in God, the changeless one of eternity. Thanks so much, Stephanie. Appreciate that good uh, special music. I appreciate the message of the song, and uh, thank you for bringing that for us this evening. I'm going to ask you to take your Bibles this evening and turn to the book of Hebrews and chapter number 12. Hebrews chapter number 12, and uh, this evening we're going to finish chapter 12 in our study here in the book of Hebrews. And uh, we've seen a lot of things, even as we've gone through chapter number 12. Uh, it started with the reminder that we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses uh, and, and that uh, we need to lay aside any weights that might hinder us as we run the race that the Lord Jesus Christ has called for us to run. And, and as we've gotten towards the end of the chapter, we've seen the writer get back to really what the theme of the entire book is. Uh, and that is we, we see it throughout. We see, of course, the overriding theme being that Jesus, Jesus is better but we see this comparison later in this chapter, Jesus in comparison to Judaism, grace in comparison to the law. And, uh, and so we're going to look at these verses, verses 25 to 29 of Hebrews chapter 12, and uh, see what the Lord might have for us in it. So Hebrews chapter number 12, and starting in verse 25, we'll read the passage of scripture, we'll go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll get into the message this evening. So again, verse number 25 See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. 
For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the moving the, sorry, the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we, re, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for um, the freedoms that we have to uh, study your word, to preach your word. I thank you for the truth of your word, how it's so applicable in our lives. And I pray that as we take these verses and um, study them and see what you would have for us from it, I pray that you would help us to take it and strive to apply it personally in our own hearts. I pray that your Holy Spirit of God would, would uh, work in our hearts and apply the truth in our own hearts as well. Uh, give me the words to say. I pray that you would help me to be able to clearly expound what these uh, challenging verses uh, may mean and what that means for us. So uh, use your word to speak to hearts, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I mentioned that uh, in really the verses right leading into this, we, we had the comparison of Jesus to Judaism, grace in comparison to the law. And in fact, right before these verses that we read, we saw two different mounts. And we looked at that the last time we were here in Hebrews. We saw Mount Sinai where Moses received the law uh, from God. And we saw Mount Zion or the heavenly Jerusalem. And in seeing these two mounts, we saw a comparison between grace and the law. Uh, the law through which God was distant and really couldn't be touched, and grace through which we were invited to have a personal relationship uh, with Christ, become a part of the family of God, and we're invited then to come boldly into his presence. These two things are, are quite the contrast, these two mounts, very much a contrast that we saw the last time we were in Hebrews. Now remember that this letter, the book of Hebrews, is being written to Hebrew believers that had left Judaism. They had been taught the law all of their lives. They had participated in animal sacrifices. Uh, and now they had turned to Christ, and it was costing them. For many of them, no doubt, it was costing them their livelihoods. Many of their families had turned their backs on them. But the writer is still reminding them that in spite of all this, in spite of these negative things that maybe they had un had to undergo uh, because of Christ, that Jesus is still better. So as we get to these verses this evening, we must keep in mind the context of the passage. It is Jesus in comparison to Judaism. It is grace in comparison to the law. It is Jesus having fulfilled the law and providing a way for individuals to have direct access to God. In fact, the last verse that we looked at, verse number 24 here in Hebrews 12, talks about the fact that Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant. We see in other portions of the New Testament that Jesus is the mediator between God and man. He, he is the one that allows us to have this access directly to God. And so we must keep all of that in mind as we look at these verses here this evening. Now, honestly, if we just read these verses on their own, as we just did a moment ago, we might scratch our heads and wonder, what in the world are these verses talking about? And what could we possibly get from these verses? Well, if we keep in mind the context, I think it's going to help us to see what it is that is being said. And hopefully, it will then allow for us to get out of these verses and to get out of the message, get out of God's word tonight, exactly what he wants for us to get. Now, notice what verse 26 says at the very beginning of the verse. It says, whose voice then shook the earth. And that's where the title comes from today. Uh, I, we, you can see the title of the message is The Voice That Shook the Earth. And, and the title really comes from that part of that verse, whose voice then shook the earth. There is a voice that has shaken the earth and will shake the earth once again, as we will see in a few moments. We will see this evening that that voice that shook the earth belongs to none other than God himself. By the way, there is only one whose voice carries with it the power 
to shake the earth. And that is God. That is God Almighty. That is Jehovah God. In verses 26 and 27, we see the words shook, shake, and shaken. We'll get into what these verses are saying in a minute, but there's something that we must touch on, I think, before we get into uh, that and, and those verses in particular. Many people have been shaken up over these last few months. There's a lot of thing that's been, things that have been taking place. For some, the, everything surrounding COVID-19 has, has shaken them. Uh, for others, maybe some of the protests and the riots that we see on the news and so on, maybe it's shaken them a little bit. Uh, for others, maybe it's the seemingly increase of governmental control and what we can do and what we can't do. And maybe for some, that has shaken you a little bit. And, and there's a lot of fear about, about the present and the future and uh, if and when things will get back to quote-unquote normal again. And, and all of these things can, can tend to shake us a little bit. Many people have been shaken to their very foundation, to their core. But can I encourage you this evening? There are some things that cannot be shaken. There are some things that can't be shaken. You might be feeling shaken today, but rest in the fact that despite all that is transpiring, despite all that has been over these last several weeks and months, despite everything that's going on around you, everything that's going on around us, everything that's happening in this world, despite all of these things, there are some things that cannot be shaken. The end of verse 27 there in Hebrews 12 says that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. So clearly there are some things that cannot be shaken. There are some things that cannot be shaken. Yes, we may go through times where it seems like everything in our lives is being shaken. Everything in our lives is unstable and unsteady. Maybe health, finances, your career, family, uh, and we've already talked about the uncertainty in our world. All of these different things, and, and it can cause us to feel like we're not on stable footing and everything is just shaking out from under us. But this verse says that some things cannot be shaken and they will remain. Now, what are some of those things that cannot be shaken? What are some of those things that will remain even when everything else is being shaken? Well, there are several things that I can think of. Uh, one is the Word of God. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 8 shows us this, I believe. Isaiah 40 verse 8 says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm glad this evening that the word of our God stands forever. It cannot be shaken. There's an awful lot that can be shaken and has been shaken around us here in these last weeks and months. But the word of our God, the Bible says, shall stand forever. It cannot be shaken. There's another thing I would say, and that is God himself. James 1 verse 17, I think, shows this to us. It says there in that verse, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. That phrase there, no variableness, means it, it, there's no changing, there, there's no shaking, there's no difference. Our God cannot be shaken. Our God does not change, will not change, cannot change, cannot be shaken. And I'm thankful for that. The Lord Jesus Christ is another one of these things that cannot be shaken. And we see that in Hebrews 13 and verse 8, a verse that many of you no doubt are familiar with and maybe uh, go to for, for comfort during trying days where that verse says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm glad that we serve a God, that we have a friend in the Lord Jesus Christ who changes not. He is the same yesterday today and forever. He cannot be shaken. And then I would say that the church cannot be shaken as well. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, I think, shows this to us where it says, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, we've talked about this before, but I don't believe that our Lord there is talking about the fact that the church is going to be built on Peter. 
the church, no, is being built upon the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, upon this rock, I think Jesus is saying. It says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It, it doesn't matter whether or not the gates of hell bombard the church. The church cannot be shaken because it's founded and based upon the Lord Jesus Christ. So in this day and age where many are shaken by what is going on around us, that doesn't have to be you. Anchor yourself to those things that cannot be shaken. Anchor yourself to the word of God. Anchor yourself in the Lord Jesus Christ. Anchor yourself even in the church as these are things that cannot be shaken. So let's take a few minutes and see what we can learn from these verses and, and see what are these verses saying? What does it mean for you and for me? There's a few things that I want for us to see this evening, the first of which is this. God has spoken in the past. God has spoken in the past. And we see that in verses 25 uh, and 26, where we read this. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven." We see that portions of these two verses refer to God speaking to Moses when he was giving the law. It talks about them refusing him who spake on the earth. And it talks about the voice that shook the earth. Notice what the Bible says in Exodus 19 and verse 18. And this is why I say I think it's pretty clear that this is the, the context or what's being referred to here. It talks about the law being given by God in Exodus 19, verse 18, being given to Moses. And in fact, the very next chapter is the, the chapter uh, of the great command or the Ten Commandments. But notice what verse 18 of Exodus 19 says. It says, And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. Did you see that? At the end of that verse, it says, the whole mount quaked greatly. So when God was giving the law, the whole mount quaked. In other words, it shook. Again, we can have confidence that this is what is being referred to in our, con in our passage here in Hebrews 12, because it's very clear. It talks in Hebrews 12 about this voice that spake and how uh, the earth shook at, at the, the sound of the voice. This is referring back to that time. The writer, again, here in Hebrews 12, had just finished talking about Mount Sinai and the giving of the law in the verses before. And if you read through the entirety of the law given back in Exodus, you see that, that as the law is given, there are consequences if the law is not obeyed, if the law is not followed. And in most cases, there were very harsh consequences. So when the writer here says in verse 25 that they escaped not who refused him who spake on earth, it's referring to the fact that if people chose to reject the law of God, what God had spoken, there were consequences. And those consequences could not be escaped. So that is at least a part of what these verses are saying. Saying that God has spoken in the past. God gave the law. God spoke the law there at Mount Sinai. And his voice shook the earth. And the mount shook and so on when God spoke. And so that's what this is referring to. The reality is that God continued to speak through the Old Testament as we look through it. He, he, it wasn't just in Exodus 19 uh, and 20 and, and going forward in the giving of the law. He spoke through the prophets. Uh, he spoke through visions in the Old Testament at times. He spoke through priests uh, like Samuel. So God has spoken in the past. And we see that in these verses, and we see that all throughout the Old Testament. God has spoken in the past. But I want us to see secondly as well, that God still speaks to us today. God still speaks to us today. And wouldn't it be sad if God only spoke in the past? That would be a sad thing, wouldn't it? If, if God had only spoken in the past, he only spoke during the Old Testament times, and he does not relay anything to us today. We have no means of hearing from God, communicating with him in any way. But God does still speak to us today, and I'm glad for that. You know, it's a different way than he spoke through the Old Testament, but he does speak nonetheless. 
In fact, look at the first part of verse number 25 in our text here in Hebrews 12. The first part of verse 25 says, See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. Him that speaketh. That's present tense. Refuse not him that speaketh. Yes, God spoke in the past, but I think the author is also saying, hey, God is still speaking today. God is still speaking to us today. Verse 27, I think is such an interesting verse. Notice what it says there. It says, and this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Now, this verse tells us that the things that, that were shaken will be removed and, and will make room for the things so that those things which are not shaken can remain. Now, again, it's important for us to remember the context, because otherwise we might look at that and say, that makes no sense, I don't understand. But in remembering the context, I believe that what is being spoken of here uh, that, that is being shaken and that's being removed is the law. Remember, the mount quaked or shook when God gave the law. So the writer here is telling the Hebrew believers that the old ritualistic way of doing things was being removed. You see that again there where it said uh, in verse 27, Yet once more signified the removing of those things that are shaken. The mount shook. The law was given during, given during that shaking. That is being removed. Why? Why was this t taking place? Well, because those rituals and sacrifices pointed to a once and for all sacrifice that would one day be made. It was pointing to that sacrifice sometime in the future that would be made. And that was Jesus Christ. And he did come. And thus the rituals, the things that pointed to Christ, could be removed. God did speak in the past. And when he spoke, the earth shook. God spoke again when his son Jesus came to earth. Remember at his baptism, God spoke. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. In Jesus coming to this earth, he fulfilled the law and made it possible for us to have a whole new kind of relationship with him and in having that new relationship, God speaks to us in very different ways than he did before. Again, if we remember uh, back to a couple of weeks ago when we were last here in the book of Hebrews, it talked about uh, Mount Sinai, which, was, uh, which couldn't be touched. And, and God and, and the relationship that people could have with God before was one really that he couldn't be touched. But now, through the Lord Jesus Christ, we have a relationship with God where we can have direct access to him. We can come boldly into his presence and what a wonderful thing that is. So God did speak in the past, yes, but he still speaks to us today. And I would suggest that he primarily speaks to us today through his word. When the last words of the Bible were written, prophecies ceased. In other words, God speaking to man the way that he had before stopped. His word was now complete. This book, the Bible, God's word, is a living book, and he speaks to us through it. And so, yes, God spoke in the past, but God does still speak to us today. And that brings us to the third thing, and that is this. We need to listen to his voice. We need to listen to his voice. If God does still speak to us today, it, it would behoove us to listen to his voice. Verse 25, we've already read it a couple of times. We're not going to take the time to read it again right now. But it talks about the fact that those that rejected God's voice in the matters of the law could not and would not escape his punishment. You might say, aha, but Pastor Brett, we are now under grace. Completely different. But wait a second, remember back to just a little bit earlier in this chapter. We saw verses about God chastening his children. As children of his, we do face chastening when we step outside the parameters, outside the boundaries that he sets up for us. Now, I'm not going to re-preach the message that I preached on that topic, but I do want to stress that just as the children of Israel should have listened to God's voice in the Old Testament, so too should we listen to his voice today, remembering that he speaks to us through his word. And when we don't listen to his word today, we will face chastening. 
just as the children of Israel faced before. So it's important that we know that his desire for us, it's important for us to know what he desires for us. And in order for us to know what he desires for us, we need to get into his word and obey what it is that we find in his word. Again, if this book, this word, is how God speaks to us today, we need to get into it so that God can speak to us. And as he speaks to us, just as he spoke in the Old Testament, as he speaks to us through his word, we need to take and obey what it is that we find in his word. So let's think about what we've seen so far in these verses. God spoke in giving the law in the Old Testament, and the earth shook. But we see that Jesus was the fulfillment of the law, and he now speaks to us through his word. There has been a removing of the ceremonial law that God laid out for the Jews, and now there's something else, a grace, that will remain. So the earth shook when God spoke. There is a removing of the things that were shaken to make room for the things that cannot be shaken, things that would remain. But there is another shaking still coming. Which leads us to the fourth thing I want for us to see from this passage, and that is this, that Jesus is coming back again. Jesus is coming back again. And we see that in the second part of verse 26. Notice what it says there. The second part of the verse, it says, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And notice what that phrase actually starts with. Now hath he promised. This isn't just a, a, a little thing off the cuff statement. No, this is a promise of God. He says, now he hath promised, saying, yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Now I believe this verse, this part of this verse, has a couple different meanings or applications. First, it's in reference, I think, to a prophecy that we see back in the book of Haggai. Now Haggai is not a book that maybe we look at all that often in our own personal study, uh, and maybe we don't preach from it all that often, but notice what the book of Haggai says in chapter 2 and verses 6 and 7. It says this, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. This reference back in the book of Hebrews, I think, is, is quoting or referring back to this passage, this prophecy about the Messiah in the book of Haggai. When Jesus came the first time, the heavens shook, and the desire of all nations that Haggai talked about did indeed come. But while this is referring back to that prophecy, I believe it's also still prophetic in nature as we look forward. It's referring to one more time that the heavens will shake. The writer, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God, clearly says, once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Folks, there's one more shaking coming. Jesus is coming back again. Just as surely as he came the first time, he will come back again. The heavens shook and Jesus left the glories of heaven some 2,000 years ago and came to this earth. Now, I'm not one that's going to predict anything about when Jesus is coming again, but I would suggest this, that, that the signs of the time are pointing to the fact that maybe there's a little bit of a rumbling that's starting to build. Jesus could come today. Jesus could come Today, he could come before I finish this message. He could come 100 years from now, but he could come today. There's a shaking that's going to transpire. There's a shaking that's going to happen, and it could be today. So knowing all of that, knowing that, that God has spoken in times past, knowing that God still speaks to us today, knowing that we need to listen to him, we need to obey him, knowing that Jesus Christ is coming back again, what does this passage encourage us to do? In other words, recognizing all of these things, what should we do about it? And that brings us to the last thing I want for us to see, and that is this. Serve him today. Serve him today. We see in verses 28 and 29 back in our text, the last couple of verses of this great chapter of Hebrews 12. Look at verses 28 and 29. It says, Wherefore, 
we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. We have a future to look forward to with Christ one day. Jesus is coming back. We've said that. I believe this passage is referring to that. It's prophesying that. And we cannot lose sight, lose sight of that if we have our faith in him, if we've put our faith and trust in him. Don't lose sight of the fact that Jesus is coming back again. But in the meantime, again, that can't be our sole focus. We, we can't be so focused on the return of Christ that we forget about anything else on this earth. And I think the writer here is saying, yes, Jesus is coming back. And yes, the, the heavens are going to shake and Jesus is going to return. But in the meantime... Serve God. In the meantime, serve him. That's what the middle of that verse says. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Let me ask you, are you showing grace in how you live your life? In how you are treating others? Is God's grace being seen through you in how you interact with others, Would you say that in the eyes of God that you are serving him acceptably? That's what this verse says, that we may serve God acceptably. Would you say that you are serving God acceptably? I can't answer that for you. You can only answer it for yourself. I have to look at my life and see if, if I am serving God acceptably, and you must look at your life as well. We know that God wants for us to serve him, but our service to him should be dedicated. We should be committed to it. You probably know people that have been completely dedicated, completely committed to something and to get to getting better at that something. And as a result, they probably did get better at it because of their level of commitment. We see that often in athletes. You, you see athletes that will uh, practice over and over and over again. Maybe the basketball player that just practices their shot or their free throw, the hockey player that, that constantly is working on their skating or their slap shot or their accuracy in their shot, uh, or other athletes that, that constantly repeat different things to try to get that muscle memory to get better at that thing. You see it in, in the arts with people that, that are involved in instruments. They practice and practice uh, the piano or the violin or other instruments. They practice and then practice. They're committed. They're dedicated to, their, to that task. Why? To get better, to improve. You see it in the business world as well. People have a drive, a, a commitment, a determination to be the best at what they do, to improve. Let me ask you, let me ask myself, are we getting better in our service for God? And when I say that, I'm not speaking on a human level so much uh, as far as trying to look good in the eyes of man or anything like that. But as our commitment level for God increases, if, if we're dedicated to God the way we should be, it would stand to reason that our service to God would, would get better. It, it would improve. And in so doing, we can serve him acceptably. The word acceptably here simply means well-pleasing. Are our lives well-pleasing to him? As we serve him, we're to do so, the end of, the, of verse 28 says, we're to do so with reverence and godly fear. Another way of putting that would, would be that we should serve him with godly fear and awe. You know, we really should stand in awe of God. Stand in awe of who he is, of what he's done, and not just of what he's done on this kind of general scale, but what he's done for you and for me. We should stand in awe of him. And then this chapter finishes, verse 29, with a quote from Deuteronomy 4 and verse 24, where it says, Our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. You might say, Well, why does the writer here in this great chapter that that a good part of it kind of compares, or at least this the end part of this chapter compares the law with grace? Why would the writer then refer back to something that was said back in, in Deuteronomy, back in the Old Testament, about our God being a consuming fire? 
Well, I believe that the reason for that is that the writer is saying that although Christ fulfilled the law, although Christ introduced grace, we should have the same motivation for serving him now as people did before. God is still God. God is still awe-inspiring. God is still a God that can be a consuming fire. So let's obey him. Let's trust him. Let's follow him. Let's serve him while we can. The reality is that the day is coming that our serving God here will be over. So let's serve him today. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for what we've seen in your word this evening. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us, that we would take what we've seen and apply it in our lives. Lord, help us not to just be doers of your word. Help us to be hearers. Or help us not to just be hearers, but help us to be doers. Lord, help us to take your word and apply it. Lord, help us to to understand what your word is saying. Help us to see that, yes, uh, you did speak in times past. Your voice shook the earth. But you still speak to us today, and you speak to us through your word. And help us, Lord, in understanding that you still speak to us today. Help us to, to listen and to, to put into practice what you tell us through your word. Lord, help us to recognize that you are coming back again. Our, our days of serving you are not uh, unlimited. There, there is a, a limit on them. It must be while we're here on this earth and before you come back. And I pray that you would help us to, to serve you while we can. Lord, I pray that you would help us to, to be motivated to serve you in an even greater way than we ever have before. Lord, may we recognize your voice when you speak to us through your word. And may we serve you this day, this week, the rest of this year, and Lord, with the rest of our lives as well. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks so much for joining with us this evening. I'm glad that you've joined us online for our service. Uh, just a couple of things before we dismiss. We want to encourage you to continue to be faithful to give. And so uh, you can do that digitally by e-transfer, givehbc at gmail.com. Or you can go to our website, HBC Barry, uh, and uh, HBC hbcberry.com, drawing a blank on a second there, hbcberry.com, and uh, click on the online giving link. But uh, e-transfer is probably the easiest. That's givehbc at gmail.com. And uh, we want to encourage you to continue to, to look out for one another, pray for one another, pray for these requests that we mentioned earlier uh, in the service. And if we can be of any service to you, please do let us know. And uh, remember... Uh, as well, our, our in-person services at 8.30 and 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Uh, if you've let us know which service you plan to come to, you don't have to let us know each week necessarily. Um, but uh, as long as we have a, an idea of who's coming each service, that's a great help to us uh, as well. Uh, this coming Wednesday night, we'll hear again from one of our missionaries uh, in our online Wednesday night service. Uh, Brother Buckingham, Joel Buckingham uh, in New Brunswick will be joining us for our, our service this week. So we'll get to hear an update from them about what, what, uh, what God has been doing in the, sur or in the ministry out there. A uh, new work that they planted out there uh, in New Brunswick. And so we'll look forward to hearing from them at 7 o'clock uh, this coming Wednesday. Again, thanks so much for joining with us. Uh, it's been a great blessing to worship with you uh, here this evening. Have a great week. If there's anything we can do for you, let us know. God bless.